Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to go through some tips on how you can look better in your Zoom calls. We are going on week, I wanna say 12 of quarantine. And I myself don't have an office job, but I've definitely had Zoom like doctor's appointments and as you guys know, I've also started doing virtual consultations with you guys and that's been going actually incredibly well and I have so much fun meeting all of you. If you ever have any questions on how to reach me or how to get an appointment with me, the link to the Elbangs website is always in the description box and from there you'll get all the information you need. So in doing these virtual consultations and obviously the only way we have right now to really communicate with people in a more visual sense is through videos. And since I come at you weekly, virtually this way, I figured I've learned a few things and some tips on how to kind of present yourself better. But the main thing that has inspired this is normally when I'm doing virtual consultations, sometimes people will like look around and they'll be like, can you please tell me which way to look? Like, or they'll normally like look away from a window and you know, like they try to find the right lighting. So I'm assuming this can help a lot of you as also I think the way of the future, even once it is safe to get back out there, I do think that a lot of future face-to-face -face meetings can be done virtually. I think we've all learned a lot about that in these last couple of weeks. So let's just get into it and give you some tips on how to look better in your Zoom calls, FaceTime, virtual consultations, whatever it may be. All right, so the first one, have to start here, it's lighting. Now, I understand that some of you might be doing Zoom calls from your computer. Your computer or your desk is either in a corner or somewhere that doesn't have natural lighting. The best thing would be to add some lights. And I knew nothing about lighting before doing YouTube, but I did understand my face and I did understand what looked good on my face. So what you want is always very balanced light on your face. So you never want to sit where there's like a window on one side because then you're going to get so many shadows on the other side of your face. And it's actually going to give you these weird ridges on your face that you almost don't have. So if you can sit in front of a window with natural light, that is ideal. It's the easiest way to go where it's going to look the absolute best. If you're not that privileged, then I would say at least two lights, two in front of you, or a ring light, that's also great. You can put that just kind of slightly behind your monitor so that you get kind of this halo of light beaming onto your face. Sorry, beaming's probably way too strong of a word, but you get what I mean. What I like to do for my virtual consultations is I sit at my makeup table where I have a lighted mirror. I can adjust how bright I want the lights. I understand that not everyone's computer is in front of a makeup station, so I will also leave my preferred lighting in my Amazon shop, which I'll leave in the description box down below. All right, the next one is angles. And I feel like by now, most millennials and younger know their angles. Um, we've definitely grown up in this digital age where we've all taken a selfie. We all kind of know what works best for us. However, a good rule of thumb, in case you don't know this, and this idea has actually been statistically proven by dating sites because men and women have a very specific way of taking photographs. So for women, they'll normally do this. And that's because whatever is closest to the camera will always appear bigger. So if you're doing it this way, your eyes appear bigger, your chin appears smaller, and, and so does your neck and kind of the rest of your body. Whereas men typically take a selfie like this, and that's because it gives them a stronger, manlier jaw. Obviously find whatever's most flattering for you. And I do believe in getting some sort of setup at either a good height for you um, and even possibly a good angle. So normally when I do virtual consultations, I have my phone on a tripod um, and I'll angle it just a tad bit this way, normally around kind of face length. Uh, if, if I was the person being interviewed, I'd probably want a little bit higher, but because I'm doing the consultation, I want to be at a good eye view where I could totally see the person's hair um, so that I can obviously advise you. But if I was the person where I was being seen, I would probably do a little bit higher. Okay, the next one, of course, is makeup. Now, the point is, I'm not gonna say you need this full face of makeup, you need to look all done up. I definitely suggest wear similar to what you would wear to work. 
so you wore like a little bit of foundation, maybe some lipstick, some mascara, I would stick to something similar to that. You obviously don't wanna show up in like a bright red lip if that's not what you would normally wear to work. So biggest things, I think some mascara just kinda opens up your eyes, makes you look more awake, especially for those early morning meetings. I think a little bit of bronzer and a little bit of blush. I think with monitors and stuff, you can just look so kind of drab and just not a lot of color to your face. So I think adding a little bit of color just makes it look like, hey, I've seen some sun and I've been out. And then the last most important thing about makeup is to powder. Now on camera, I don't think there is much of a thing as too much powder. All right, now this wouldn't be an Elvang's tip video if we didn't include some hair, of course. I've always said, and I feel like a lot of my friends and family agree, but hair is everything. Um, I would much rather go out with not a stitch of makeup and my hair color and my blowout look good. Makeup is something that washes off. When your hair is blown out and your hair is looking amazing, there's almost like an internal confidence that comes from it because your hair is actually you. It's a part of you. Whereas makeup, it of course enhances your beauty, but it's something that you put on and comes off at the end of the night. So I know for me that when my hair looks better, I feel more confident, I feel like I can speak better, and I feel like I definitely can work better. As long as you kind of smooth the top, you can add some waves, wear it straight, and of course maintaining your color. So making sure that your roots look somewhat fresh. So I baby lighted my hair just a couple of days ago, but before that, the only thing I'd been doing to my color was just a root touch up. And I was doing that with Isalon's color. I did a whole video where I showed you how I applied it, how to do it. So if you're definitely in need of giving your roots a little TLC and you kind of don't know where to start, Isalon is great for that. They have like an online quiz where they'll walk you through so that you get the exact color to match your hair color so that you can do a root touch up at home. All right, so the next tip is to wear a top in a color that is flattering to you. Obviously that's also true for everyday life, but I feel like with these video calls, you don't actually have to put a whole outfit together. There's so many times where I'm like, oh, I love this top, I totally wanna to wear this today, but I've already decided I'm wearing these jeans and this top and these jeans just don't go together or whatever. I, I know women will understand what I'm saying. You know, it can still be very comfortable. It doesn't mean that you have to have this like beautiful blouse on, but at least wear a color that makes you happy and that's going to enhance your hair, your skin tone and all of that. And as I'm saying that in an oversized men's sweater, but I do love this color. So it's a perfect example of that. Super side note, but I feel like this whole quarantine, I've done my makeup every single day. I've done my hair every single day, but when it comes to clothing, all I've worn is like oversized men's sweaters as like dresses. It has literally been my uniform. And it's funny because the other day, like a friend asked, she was like, so where are you on the getting ready scale? And I've been feeling really comfy at home and that of like what I've been wearing. But then she was like, I feel like every time I like talk to you, you're like wearing makeup. And then I was like, yeah, I, I do my hair makeup every day. But then when it comes to clothes, this is where we're at. <laughs> and yeah, guys, that is it. That completes my tips for how to look good in your video calls. If you guys have been doing a lot more of these in these last couple of weeks, and if you've accumulated some of your tips, please leave them down below, share them with everybody. And I hope some of my tips have helped you guys out. And as always, I hope you're all staying safe and sane, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.